If you've been a landlord for any length of time, there are certain things you just don't want to hear from your tenant. Well, there are certain 10 words in particular you never want to hear. And those 10 words are this, getting a service animal, and uh, by the way, it's a turkey. Now, have we experienced this? Not yet, but I know property management companies that have actually had this conversation with tenants. You may not think it's legit, but look at this real life, actual picture taken on an airline, I believe it was a Southwest airline, from when a person turned around to hear, to see what the noise was behind them, to discover there was a service turkey sitting in the seat behind them, so they snapped a picture of this. This is real stuff. It's, it's humorous, it's sad, it's weird, but it's real. Tenants are bringing in service animals. Now the concept behind service animals is very straightforward. Think of a seeing eye dog. If a tenant comes in and they're blind and they have a seeing eye dog, we all get that. That's the idea, the legitimate idea behind service animals. Now, has this been abused a little bit today? Yes, we certainly think it has. So let me give you a little bit of information to keep in mind as you walk through, as a landlord, considering some options around service animals. So let me ask you a couple of questions to test your knowledge. Number one, when is an animal legally not a pet? Well, the answer is when it's a service animal. Now, how do we define service animals? Let me tell you that. But let me first ask you two true or false questions. Number one, a tenant may only make a request for a service animal at the time of application. What do you think? Do they have to, rep to uh, request the service animal at the same time they're applying to your property? Or can they request it later on? Well, the answer to this is false. They don't have to make the request at the time of application. As a matter of fact, they can make the request for a service animal the day they move in a week after they move in, a year after they move in. HUD specifically has guidelines around these types of issues as it relates to service animals. One of those things says the tenant may request a service animal at any point in time during the lease term. One more true or false question. You may deny a service animal request if the breed is on your restricted list. What if the tenant requests to bring in a service animal that's a pit bull and the city that you're in says, we don't allow pit bulls? What do you do? Well, you may not deny the breed. HUD specifically says breed restrictions are not legal as it relates to service animals. So the fact that the city denies a particular breed is irrelevant as to whether or not you, you may deny that breed based upon that. So you've got to keep that in mind. You've got to think in terms of a service animal would be the same from a legal standpoint as a pair of crutches. If somebody comes in with a pair of crutches, you wouldn't say, oh, we don't rent to crutches. We don't allow crutches in our, par in our property. You'd never say that. HUD wants you to think of a service animal in that same legal concept. Now what you have to do, because HUD does have some guidelines around how to treat that request for a service animal. And you treat it legally as a reasonable accommodation modification request. And that may not mean anything to you, but it means something big to HUD. What that means is they have guidelines on how you want to treat that. You treat it in the same way as if you would treat it if a tenant came to you in a wheelchair and said, I would like a wheelchair ramp to be installed to lead up to my front door because I'm in a wheelchair and I can't get up the two steps. So that's the concept behind it. Now there's a three criteria test that you have to put that individual through, that request through, to determine whether or not you're going to allow the modification or the accommodation of a service animal. And it's three simple, relatively simple questions. The first question is this, is there a disability? That's, a, that's big, it's rather straightforward, it's important. There has to be a disability. What that means is, if a person doesn't have a disability, it doesn't matter if they have a service animal or not. They have to have a disability in order to meet the first test. Test, question number two is this, the accommodation or modification must be necessary to fully enjoy the property. What that means is there has to be a tie-in between the disability and the request for the modification. Let's go back to our person in a, in a wheelchair. If a person in a wheelchair says, I would like a wheelchair ramp installed in my property. Well, we put them through the test. Do they have a disability? Yes, they're in a wheelchair. Will the accommodation request, in essence, offset the disability? Will a wheelchair ramp offset the fact that there's a step and they're having difficulty entering the property? Yes, it will. So they meet those two criteria. So that's the question you ask as well. Is the pet offsetting the disability? Now this can get a little bit tricky because disability can be mental, it can be physical, it can be emotional. So if it's a pet that helps reduce the stress level of a child, can that be considered? Yes, that should be considered. The third part of the question is this, the request must be reasonable. Now this is again where it gets a little bit tricky because what's reasonable? Well, HUD does have some guidelines around what they consider reasonable and not reasonable. And you need to look deeper into that. We don't have time in this short amount, uh, uh, this short video to go into that. But these are the three questions you have to ask. And HUD has guidelines around these things. For example, if uh, the person's disability is obvious, you can't ask about it. 
So be cautious with this stuff. So let me ask you one final true or false question. The landlord may charge an additional security deposit for a service animal. So let's say you're going to approve the service animal and you say to the tenant, of course, you can go ahead and bring in your service animal, but I'm going to charge you additional pet deposit. What did you just say wrong there? What did I just say wrong there? Remember, it's not a pet. Legally, it's not a pet. So false. You may not charge any type of an additional rent amount, any type of an additional security deposit for bringing in a service animal. Why? Because it's not a pet. So be cautious with this. HUD takes this stuff very, very seriously. If you have questions on this, call our office. You don't want to mess with this. You don't want to stumble into this. You must take service animals. You're required by law to do that. I was giving a class not too long ago about service animals. And at the beginning, the gentleman raised his hand and said, well, this isn't a problem for me. I said, why not? And he said, well, I just don't take service animals in my properties. Oh, a lawsuit waiting to happen. Be cautious with this and you will make sure that you can be a successful landlord following the HUD guidelines as it relates to service animals.